so the, the, my answer to that was there was not a set way to do it, and there's not a set set of instructions, but you kind of gauge it on your patient's PO2. You know, if your patient's PO2, if you're on 100%, we've talked about the fact that you could have a PO2 in the 600s, right? Mm -hmm. Theoretically. So if your patient's PO2 is five something, which you will see, um, maybe it was a full arrest or somebody came in and you put them on 100% and you draw an ABG and their PO2 is five something. So clearly, you could go down a significant amount, right? If my PO2 is 500, probably I don't have a huge issue with my lungs. So you could probably even go down 30% at a time because that's pretty close to normal. So, but what if your PO2 is only 100 and it should be 600? Well, then you're not gonna make that, that big of a jump. So you kind of have to gauge where your patient is at to decide how much of a jump. And some of that you'll get as you spend more time in the ICU and, and see your patients. So if you have a really high PO2, you can make a more substantial jump than if patient's PO2 is 90. So if it's 90, you know you're gonna come down because we said we wanna get them off of 100% and target 60. But if your patient's PO2 is 90, I'm probably gonna go only go in increments of five or 10 because I don't know how much it's gonna affect them. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So the other uh, setting we need to talk about is PEEP. A starting PEEP setting is pretty much plus five for everybody. The other option would be if your patient was already on CPAP or NIPPV, you could use the same PEEP or EPAP you had them on. If your patient was on 10 of CPAP, it's not gonna make sense to start at five. You would start at 10. If your patient's on 16 over eight of BiPAP, we're not gonna go to five, we would start at eight. Does that make sense? So if you, if you have nothing, start at five. If they were on a previous setting that you can use on the vent, then you would just use that same one. Yes? So the same with, would go with like a peak valve on like a bag valve mask or something? Yeah, usually we're not gonna be um, bagging with PEEP and when we're just intubating somebody, but we might be in a rare circumstance. Okay. So PEEP's usually pretty straightforward. We'll talk about some patients where you're always gonna to wanna to be sure to start at a lower PEEP, uh, patients with high ICPs and things like that when we talk about disease-specific patients. Okay, so one thing that I've talked to a number of you about and I need to make sure, and I'm just gonna cover it here, is the pressure control setting. This is more a, a note that you need to make. If you're putting your patient in pressure control, and I really should have talked about this when we talked about pressure control, so I apologize, but I can't skip it. So pressure control setting, your pressure, say your doctor orders pressure control of 20. For every vent that we have here, except for the Draeger, so the Servo, the PB, and the Galileo, because there always has to be some crazy exception for everything, it just makes our lives so much fun. <laughs> Could never be the straightforward. So you have to take the PEEP into account. So when you're looking at a pressure control setting, your, this number should equal whatever your PIP number is. So your pressure control of 20 should be reflected in your PIP. It's set in the settings, but it needs to match the PIP. And I'm gonna tell you why that's important. So when you're looking at your vent, your peak inspiratory pressure should equal whatever the pressure control setting is that the doctor gave you. So with that being said, on all the vents except the Draeger, you have to take PEEP into consideration. So your actual pressure control setting is going to be the pressure control ordered by the doctor minus the PEEP. So let's say our patient's on PEEP of five. My pressure control setting 
will equal 15, the PEEP will equal 5, so the PIP together with both of those will equal 20. Oh, sorry, forgot to turn my volume down. Now, if you're on the Draeger, you just put in 20 because it accounts for it differently. So whatever your pressure control number is, if you're on the PB, the Servo, or the Galileo, take that number, subtract your PEEP, and that will be the number you put the pressure control at in the settings themselves. Then your PIP will equal the 20, and that's what you'll see. If you do this different, if you make this number 20, your PIP's going to equal 25, and we're supposed to be at 20. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you're on the Draeger, you just dial in 20. Every other vent, it's the setting minus the PEEP equals the pressure control setting to get a pressure control that the doctor ordered. So that's the only way to set Mm-hmm. Any questions on that? Okay. So we just have a few more settings we need to talk about. <coughs> what we've covered so far is pretty much the settings that a doctor would order or that would be part of your protocol. But we talked about settings that you guys would change and monitor yourselves that are just as important. So that would be the I time is for one. I time normal is between eight to 1.2 seconds. And this is not the first time we've talked about this. And the I time could be a number in seconds, it could be a ratio, it could be a percent. But you're still going to have somewhere where it shows you what the actual time is. So on some of the servos, it gives you the I to E ratio, but shows you what the I time is in a separate box. On the Galileo, it's a percent. And by changing the percent, you change the I time in a different box. On the Draeger, it has the actual time, and on the PB, it has the actual time. So depending on which one you're at, there's going to always be a way to adjust it. It just might not be a dial that actually says seconds. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is standard starting eye time. You can always go with one. It's easy. So we also have flow. Range is 40 to 80 liters per minute, but a very good starting point is 60. And remember, as you increase or decrease your flow, it will increase or decrease your eye time. Remember, those two go together. Increasing flow decreases eye time. Decreasing flow increases eye time. So that's also a way your eye time can be affected. We talked about that one a couple weeks ago. Increasing flow decreases your eye time because it's going to go faster, just like driving somewhere faster. The speed of the volume going in. If you decrease the flow, it'll make the inspiratory time longer. Just like if you decrease the speed of your car, it will take longer to get wherever you're going. The breath is the same way. Okay? And then there's a flow pattern. And I told you, um, when we talked about pressure control last week, that you couldn't set the flow pattern. 
There's two main flow patterns. You don't set this in any of them, the flow pattern? No, you do. Hold on. So what we're talking about here, when you guys look at your vent, you have three different waveforms. You have a flow waveform, and that's the one that we're talking about here. You have a pressure waveform, and that's the waveform I drew out when I drew out your modes, and I did them in volume and pressure. And then you have a volume waveform, and we'll have a whole separate lecture on waveforms, but I, it's important that you understand there's three different ones. So, here, let's show you. So, there's a pressure waveform, and there's a volume waveform. So this one's gonna show you the flow pattern that's being used. The pressure waveform actually shows you what kind of breath is being delivered, and volume is just gonna show you how much volume. So flow pattern is always gonna be in liters per minute. Pressure is in centimeters of water, and volume is in mLs or, or liters, just like we talk, we, our units always are for those. So is it pressure pattern or pe pressure? Waveform, wave pressure waveform. Wave and volume waveform. <coughs> so the flow pattern is showing you how the flow is being delivered in the breath that's being given. So is it, an, an, is this one here, you get an initial burst of flow and then it slowly tapers off. And this one here, the flow pattern is constant. And it's gonna be very important to not confuse these different waveforms because they have different things for different reasons. So this is a decelerating waveform and this is a square or constant. So decelerating. Or sometimes you'll see it called descending because it starts with an initial burst and then slowly tapers off or decelerates off or descends down. This one looks like a square. So it's square. It's also called constant. The preferred flow pattern is decelerating. So if you can change it to decelerating, that's what you do. Because the way that flow is delivered, it mimics a natural breath more, it produces lower pips, better distribution of gas flow. Uh, there's a whole de bunch of reasons why this is preferred. So lower pips, better distribution of gas, better distribution of gas throughout our patient and it mimics more of a natural breath so it's just more comfortable for them overall. Yeah. Mimics a regular breath more. <coughs> So the reason you can't set the flow pattern in pressure control is because it automatically defaults to this one. The only flow pattern there is in pressure control is decelerating. You can't set it, which is why I told you last week that you couldn't set it. So this is gonna be the flow pattern in pressure control, the decelerating one. But you don't set it. No, it's automatic. Okay. It's important to understand that you're not gonna have a place to set it because you can't. So pressure control defaults to the decelerating flow pattern. Did you guys have a better morning today? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we on it? You still look tired. <laughs> we only have a few more minutes of this. Pressure control defaults to this flow pattern. 
decelerating. When you're in volume control, here we go again, depending on the ventilator, some vents you can set the flow pattern and volume control and some you can't, which is why I told you last week you would have the ability to change the flow pattern if you could, because you'll have to look at the settings that you're given and this is where you're gonna learn what can and can't be set even more. So if you're in volume control, it's either gonna default to this one or it's gonna let you pick. I know, I didn't do it. I pro <laughs> volume, yeah, they should, because this is the best. Volume control, you can set either one if it'll let you, otherwise the vent just has its own default. You can just put it that way. And that's to the square. Yes. It defaults to the square unless you Yeah, because the Draeger and the Servo, you can't set a flow pattern, it's just there. The PV and the Galileo, you can. I can tell you that the Galileo and the PB allow you to set the flow pattern in volume control. But it's defaulting to the square? Yeah, it defaults to the square. You need to change it to that if you can. The Galileo? And the PB are the only ones that let you do that. <laughs> and volume control? Uh -huh. Do you ever want it in the square? No, unless that you have no other choice because it doesn't let you change it. Which would be the other? Right, the servo and the Draeger don't let you change the flow pattern. Yes. <laughs> this is where you're going to have to start just going around and inputting settings in each of your vents to get to know them better. What did you say, the Draeger and the what? And the um, servo. Mm -mm. So it'll be square. Is the square one beneficial to anyone? <laughs> no, not really. And you're just stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. And the servo default square. And you're in volume control. In pressure control, you can't set it. It's always decelerating. I didn't make them all. Does the fact that it I just teach them. That the Draeger and the servo can't be squared is that pressure control less? Like you don't want to use it as much? No. No. It honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. That, like, but th this one really is preferred if you had a choice. Volume defaults to square. Volume de so defaults to square and pressure defaults to salary. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have. Okay, so let's see. One other thing. I'm going to erase these two lines, these right here, okay? Good? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I to E ratio. This is, remember I told you there was going to be a ratio and it's different than the I time. I did tell you that. The ratio is like the pieces of the pie. So we have I time, but we also have a ratio. A standard ratio for your normal adult patient is one to three, one to four, somewhere around there. <clears throat> one thing you need to understand, because sometimes with rates and the way things we have our numbers set, your IE ratio might be one to five, one to six. We don't worry about ratios that are bigger. We worry about them if they're too small, like a one to one or a one to two. Because one to one would be like one second I time, one second E time, two second I time, two second E time. And that's rare that we would ever use that. You generally want your inspiration to be shorter and you have more time to exhale. So in the ratio of the breath being delivered, one part would be inspiratory and three parts would be expiratory. One part would be inspiratory, four parts would be expiratory. So if your I time is one, your E time, let's say that our total cycle time was five seconds. E time was 
Thank you. Your e-time would be four. In that one instance, when the I time is one, the ratio is the same. It's one to four. So if your I time is one second and your E time, for example, is four seconds, your ratio is one to four. If your I times one second and your E times three seconds, your ratio is one to three. And I'm gonna, but of course that's not always the case because our I time is not always one. So I'm gonna show you how to know what the ratio is when it's not one. But I wanna show you if your I time is one and you're, you take your E time and it's just this, it's the same because it's a one second, so it's easy. But now what about if our I time was 0.8 and our E time was 4.2 seconds. How do I figure out my ratio? I take my E time and I divide it by my I time and whatever that number is, I put a one in front of it and it would be one to whatever. What's 4.2 divided by eight? Five point something, right? So you take your five point something. If your I time is not one, you still have to figure out what know how to figure out what the ratio would be. It's they take it's the I, it's the E time divided by the I time, and then you get whatever that number is, and you put a one in front of it, and that's how the ratio works. Because it's one part inspiratory, five parts. Expiratory. Five point two five. So we can say five point three. One to five point three. You can round it. So you always you have you always have that one there. Yeah, mm -mm. you always put a one in front of it because we're trying to figure out a ratio. It's one to something, and so when we do it this way, it's always going to have just put a one in front of it because that's how we want our ratio to be one to whatever. Does that all make sense? Yeah. So remember, don't worry about if your ratio is too high. We more worry about it if it's too low. Because people will be like, oh, I can't put the I time there. It makes my ratio 1 to 6. Doesn't matter. That's not a concern. Just like usually lungs being over compliant is our pro not our problem. Being under compliant is. <laughs> Got to focus on what's going to cause the problems. I.e. ratios too short are going to not work for your patient. So remember that these four settings here, they all work together. They change each other. This changes this. This changes this. This can change this. Actually, if you change the flow pattern, it changes them as well. So remember that changing one changes the other. But these are the settings that are not ordered by your doctor. So they are, and they are just as important, if not more important, that you guys know how to adjust. Because of setting my eye time appropriately, setting my flow appropriately is going to make my patient comfortable. And you don't want a patient that fights your vent. <coughs> and when we talk about waveforms, I'll show you how to tell if your patient is not getting enough flow. They're air hungry. You're not giving them enough. Things like that. So you'll have to know how to recognize that and know that that's when you have to go up on the flow. So you guys, these are really important and you have to understand what they mean and what changing the, them affects in your patient. Because sometimes just changing my flow makes all the difference in the world. Questions? So, yeah. yeah. So flow pattern. Can you describe more what's happening? So you said the first one that the flow drops, but the square one. What's no, the no, 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 no. What I said that this one, the this is the only pattern too that has li uh, lines above and below the scale. Well, you'll see when you look at the pattern <coughs> of the event, they're all the, the other ones are above. Ooh. This one is decelerating. It starts with a burst of flow and tapers off. This one keeps it the same throughout. It's just constant. That's the only difference. So it's just 
It's just the way the flow is delivered. This one has it constant throughout the entire breath. This one gives you initial burst and then slowly tapers off. Oh, okay. So it gives the patient initial burst and then slowly tapers off. That's why it's more comfortable because it kind of satisfies the need to get the breath. Yeah, okay. Yes? So what's the pressure waveform and volume waveform? Well, we're going to talk about those in a whole another lecture, but the pressure waveform, if you're looking at it, so we have the flow pattern, the pressure waveform This is pressure and this is time. So it's going to show you what the pressure is going to, like so graphically you could see on a graph what the pressure goes to and how long it's being held for each breath. That's the ones I've been drawing out and the volume and the modes. And then, um, so you'll just see that for every breath like that. Graphically, what's the pressure going to and how long is it being held for? And then the volume one is volume and time. So you have volume here and time here. And this one, I'll just show you graphically again. You'll have numbers over here. What volume is being delivered? What volume is being delivered? What's volume is being delivered? And Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's all part of the flow pattern? No, they're all different ones is what I'm saying. There's the flow pattern, the pressure one, and the volume one. Oh. There's three different ones. When you go to your vents, some only have two, but you have the ability usually to see these three different. And I'll have a whole lecture on waveforms, but the, what's good about waveforms is there's a lot of things that you can see just from looking at these waves that you don't know what they mean yet. <laughs> they actually provide very valuable information. Yes? So I think the reason there's some confusion, you drew those up there, but we can't change those. Those are just different forms we can see. We can only change the flow pattern, right? Is that correct? Um, we can't do anything to change. We can make event setting changes, but we can't directly change correct. those patterns. We correct. can only change the flow pattern. Okay. <laughs> I did. I just wanted you to see that there was three different ones for right now. We have a whole separate lecture on waveforms that we'll talk about in a couple weeks. So you're saying like when you look at the monitor, just like you would see a monitor. There's three that different has a patterns. And everything. Yes. It's going to be three different patterns. And that's like that's that. one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can set that flow pattern. It's not like I'm going to go to my ventilator and say, what kind of pressure waveform do I want? <laughs> that's going to be determined by what your settings are. What kind of volume waveform I want, that's, that's not going to happen. So I just wanted you to see drawing out graphically what those flow patterns look like so you knew what the difference was. Does that help a little? It's not going to answer all your questions until we talk about it more. You have to let that lie, okay? <laughs> let that be one of the unknowns for right now that we don't like to have. <laughs> okay, questions? All right. So what we need to do now is get your labs out and work on your events. We need to finish up lab four. And then 